Are drivers really paying for cyclists, or is that just something people repeat because it feels true? When you actually follow the money, it turns out the story is not what you think. So you're out on your bike, right? Someone winds down the window and shouts, Get off the road! You don't pay road tax! It's the go-to argument, the final word in every online comment section. Drivers pay, cyclists freeload. End of story. Except it's not true, and I'm going to show you exactly why. The truth is, roads are paid for by everyone, and if anything, cyclists are the ones paying for drivers. Let's pull this myth apart piece by piece, because once you see how the system actually works, when that guy at the traffic lights shouts at you, you'll be able to put him in his place. Let's do what politicians hate the most, follow the money. Drivers love to say they pay for the roads, but the truth is, and I'll say it louder for the people at the back, there's no such thing as road tax. It died in 1937. What you pay is vehicle excise duty, or VED, and it's not a road fee, it's an environment tax. The higher your emissions, the higher your bill. Even fuel duty, which brings in over 25 billion pounds a year, goes straight to the treasury. It is not a dedicated road fund. And that money doesn't even necessarily touch the roads. It goes into the same pot that funds hospitals, schools, and MPs moat cleaning. Now, electric drivers. You've been very quiet, haven't you? Because you've been freeloading on that front. But not anymore. In April 2025, EVs started paying VED too, because the government is losing billions in fuel duty as drivers switch to electric. And the cost of brake and tyre pollution isn't disappearing with zero emission badges. So yes, EV drivers also pay road tax, but it still won't pay for roads. It's just another general tax. So when someone says, I pay for the roads, what they really mean is, I pay the same as everyone else, plus a bit extra for my car's environmental impact. Local roads, where almost all cycling happens, are funded by council tax, business rates, and central government grants. According to the Department for Transport, over 90% of road spending comes from these sources, not from drivers. Councils don't even get a slice of the VED. So even if you don't drive, you're still paying for roads every time you buy a coffee, pay rent, or earn a living. Cyclists, pedestrians, even people on buses, everyone pays. And when you think about it, that makes sense. Roads are public infrastructure, like streetlights or pavements. It's not like you need to pay a special walking tax to use the pavement. It's just funded from your taxation. So why do people still believe this? Because the car industry wants you to. For decades, they've pushed the idea that drivers own the road, that your car gives you more rights than anyone else. They love this narrative. It turns driving into an identity, not just transport. You're not just behind the wheel, you're part of the club. Everyone else, cyclists, pedestrians, they're outsiders. It's clever marketing, but it's also very toxic because it divides us into those who pay and those who don't, when in reality, we all do. And it works. Look at comment sections under any cycling post. Cyclists don't pay is the number one complaint. It's become cultural, like a myth passed down through generations of bad talk radio. Tim, did you write this? <laughs> Threw a piece of paper at me. Okay, so let's be fair. Drivers do pay a lot. Stuff like fuel, insurance, MOTs, repairs, parking, and VED. Driving is expensive, but then again, so is owning a house. That doesn't mean they're paying for everyone else. In fact, most of these costs are private costs. You're paying to run your own vehicle, not to maintain the roads. Even fuel duty, which goes to the treasury, doesn't cover the full costs of motoring. A study by the RAC Foundation found that the social costs of driving, like pollution and congestion and road injuries, far exceed what's raised in motoring taxes, so we are actually subsidizing driving. According to research by the European Cyclists' Federation, the average car driver costs society about 16 cents per kilometre in damage and public expense, while the average cyclist actually saves society 12 cents per kilometre in health benefits and reduced congestion. So if we're playing this who's paying for who game, it's actually cyclists who are subsidising drivers. Think about it. Cars are heavy. They tear up road surfaces. Engineers use something called the fourth power law to estimate how much vehicles wear down roads. The rule is simple, double the weight on an axle and the road damage goes up 16 times. Let's run the numbers. Okay, so me and my bike together with water and cameras weigh about 92 kilograms. Split that over two wheels, that's an average of 46 kilograms per axle. An average car without driver and passengers weighs about 1500 kilograms or 750 kilograms per axle. Um, I'm not going to try and read out that weird little equation thing, but basically, um, that's about 70,000 times the road damage that, I, that me and my bike do. So an average car, 
<laughs> does a lot more damage. If I paid £10 a year for road wear, the proportional cost for the car would be £700,000 a year. That's why charging cyclists is absurd and ultimately meaningless. The math says their impact barely exists. It's why a family hatchback wrecks the road thousands of times faster than a bicycle, and why HGVs are absolute road grinders. A cyclist's impact is so tiny, it's basically background noise in the data. Now think about every car, van, and HGV on the road. Councils are spending billions patching potholes caused by vehicles that already cost taxpayers more to accommodate. And that's before you count the hidden costs like air pollution and noise pollution and collisions. Public Health England estimates that air pollution kills 28,000 to 36,000 people every year in the UK. Most of that comes from motor traffic. So drivers aren't paying for cyclists. The NHS is paying for the damage caused by cars. We all are. Now, here's why cyclists are the ultimate subsidy. Cyclists take up less space, cause no pollution, and make zero noise. Um, not sure that one applies to my free hub. Anyway, they also stay healthier, meaning fewer GP visits, less strain on the NHS, and fewer sick days. Every time someone cycles instead of drives, it's a small gift to society. According to Transport for London, cycling delivers £13 of economic benefit for every £1 invested in infrastructure through health improvements, reduced congestion and cleaner air. Meanwhile, roads designed for cars lose money over time due to constant maintenance, enforcement and crashes. So no, drivers are not paying for cyclists. Cyclists are helping pay for the mess that cars have made. Here's the emotional bit. Because people don't argue this based on spreadsheets, it's about fairness. When a driver sees a cyclist glide past traffic, it feels unfair. I paid for this road. Why are they getting in my, in my way? Why are they going past me? Okay, it's, it's human nature, but it's exploited by the media and amplified. We confuse frustration with ownership, but roads aren't private driveways. They're shared space, funded by everyone, used by everyone, maintained for everyone. And if fairness is the goal, then cyclists are the ones who should be angry. They're paying the same taxes, but getting far less infrastructure, expected to take far more risk and the constant PR beating in the media. Imagine if drivers were treated the same way, if potholes were left unfilled because you should just drive somewhere else, if newspapers ran headlines calling them entitled motorists for wanting the potholes fixed and wanting safe roads. It's absurd, and yet that's how cyclists are treated daily. This argument, cyclists don't pay, isn't really about money. It's about control. Because if you believe cyclists don't belong, then you can justify bad road design, lack of protection and aggressive behaviour behind the wheel. But once you realise we all pay and cyclists actually give back more, that whole hierarchy collapses. You start seeing cycling for what it is, a net positive for society that deserves support, not scorn. When cities invest in cycling, everyone benefits. Drivers get less congestion, buses run faster, air gets cleaner, kids can walk and ride safely again. It's not about taking something away from drivers. It's about giving everyone more choice. The idea that cyclists are freeloaders isn't just wrong, it's upside down. The people accused of not paying are the ones saving taxpayers millions every year. Next time someone says, you don't pay for the roads, ask them this, really? Then where does your road tax go? Because they won't be able to answer that question and they will realize the myth just ran out of gas. So thanks for watching and thanks for coming along for the ride. Ride, drive, train, fly, walk safe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Oi.